What's up everybody? Welcome back to Garage Gym Gains, home of pretty much everything home gym related, as you already know. If you're new to the channel, lately we've been doing a lot of garage gym, basement gym tour reactions. We do unboxings, reviews, discussions, that type of thing. So if that interests you, hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button because it does help out the channel. But today we're checking out Simon's anime inspired home gym. I think it is, I don't know if it's a garage or basement, so we'll find out together, I suppose. And make sure you keep track of what your favorite part of his gym is and then comment down below. I'll tell you what my favorite part is at the end. So we do have audio this time. I need to take this tag off. That's just been on there forever. And every time I go to edit a video, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to take that off. And I never do. So so a lot of you guys have been asking and I have been putting it off because I'm lazy, but finally I will be showing you guys my entire home gym tour. But first I'll show you the entrance that most of you probably haven't seen before. As you can see right here, it's just a black door with these two uh, masks and we just open this door. Real quick before we get too far into it, I do have a note here that says Simon has about 20,000 into the gym, so that just gives you a little bit of a frame of reference. Before I start reviewing everything and going into details about the home gym, I want to say the layout of how I want to go about this. I want to just tell everything and just do a quick, uh, basically walkthrough of the home gym and just list all the prices on the screen. Uh, I will have to be doing that after because I don't know the exact prices off the top of my head, but I want to go off everything from the floor to the gym equipment to the paint to basically every single dime and penny that I spent building this gym at the start of the whole lockdown uh, back in March. So that being said, here we go. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you do, I make new videos every week on home gym stuff and training and everything between fitness and basically gym reviews and whatever else I like to do. And I hope you guys stick around, leave a like, and comment and subscribe if you guys haven't done that already. It really helps me out and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for the support. And let's get into so it. So starting off at this corner, as you can see, I have a dart <laughs> wall. I did not have this originally. I didn't buy it. Uh, my parents actually bought this and they wanted to put it in here. So I was like, okay, fine. Um, as you can see, I'm not gonna count this towards my budget that I spent because I didn't buy it. So. I didn't spend the money on it. And I have a flag here. I'm gonna total all the flags, prices, and stuff at the right here. I have a clock. This is a digital clock I got off of Amazon. Uh, I use magnets on the back to put it up against a pole. Right here, I painted the door all black. Uh, so it looks cooler and more badass. And I have a frame of my girlfriend and I that she got a Naruto version of us together and I got a frame off of that to put it up on my door and right here you got hey. Mr. Bobby uh, I don't use it as much as I want to and I should because I spend quite a bit of money on it this looks a lot like the bad guy from the last video but now he's wearing a backwards hat instead of the beanie this guy's been following us I got this off of Target and just put a shirt on him and stuff right here I'm not gonna list the price for this either because we had this in our home uh, a while ago for my grandmother who used to uh, use it because she had a stroke. And it's just a Schwinn um, stationary bike that you could probably get off Amazon or Facebook for cheap. Right here, I have a Paramount leg curl I got off of Facebook Market for a really, really good deal. Uh, it goes up to around, I believe, 170 pounds. So it's quite a lot and it's a commercial piece, which is really, really nice. 
I did get the leather, the padding on here changed off of uh, this website online because the original padding looked really gross. Same thing with this dip machine that I got off Facebook Market used. Uh, this goes up to 200 pounds. I re-spray painted it because I didn't like the gray look it had before. And yeah, basically just replace the padding as well because it was older and it looks really nice. If I'm not mistaken, that is the first pin loaded dip machine that we've seen in a home gym so far at least. We did see the plate loaded Titan version in the gym right before this, but this is the first one that we've had that was pin loaded. As you can see right here, there's some adder weights. I have those throughout the gym. I'll list the price here as well. Um, they're just nice change weights that you could use to increase the machine. Right here, it says dominate. Uh, these letters I got off of Amazon. It's just a nice little touch to the home gym to make things a bit more unique. Whereas most of the time, most home gyms look very dingy and just not very welcoming. I just think it looks really cool with that sign lit up as soon as you walk in. Uh, these fridges, I'm not gonna list basically because they were here before uh, I built the home gym. Uh, these special lights, as you can see, I have these LED lights all throughout the gym. Uh, I'll list the whole price for all the LED, LED lights right here, as well as the neon light right there. Over here, I have some Naruto posters, and as you can see, these are full custom Naruto posters that I got off of a, a website I found on Instagram. It's really nice because this artist uses real pictures she took in different countries and put these animated figures on them if you don't watch Naruto, it's an anime. Uh, right here, I have a Titan lap pull down machine with a selectorized weight cable. Uh, this is really nice. I use this for almost all my back training pretty much and it's nice because the weight stack goes up to 300 pounds which is quite unnecessary because if you're using 300 pounds on a lap machine then you're pretty much most likely cheating yourself but it's nice because it goes as high as 300 pounds so you would never have to worry about running out of weights and very good choice on the lap pull down i have one in the gym as well and it's awesome i love it Right there on the side, I have a bunch of cable attachments. Got a rope pull down, a longer rope pull down, some individual uh, D handles. Over here, I got some more. I also really like the idea of using those pins as kind of an attachment storage. I have the wall control unit that's right beside my lat pull down, but for some of the extra stuff, or if I get other attachments that don't really fit on the wall control unit, that's a very clever idea. I like that handles and carabiners and an extension chain and some more adder weights right here these are 2.5 pounds and I'll list those all the prices here on the floor here I have an adjustable kettlebell which I just recently did a review on uh, this is nice I don't use it that much because I don't really use kettlebells in my training but it's nice to have because you know if other people want to use it or something so right here is a mirror, a super long mirror, but these are actually two mirrors I got off of uh, Facebook Market that was originally on a closet door, and I just kind of put them together. I got my dad to help me and put it together, which is really nice, and it works. You don't have to spend a crap ton of money on expensive mirrors, because I know mirrors like these will cost upwards to a couple hundreds of dollars. I got these for not that bad. I think total for like 150 or something like that. And right here. Mirrors can get kind of expensive, but 100% worth it. Even if you don't go with the real huge mirrors, get the cheaper four by five foot mirrors from Home Depot. They're like 50 bucks a piece. Totally worth it. Totally changes the space, makes it feel more like a gym. Even if you want to be hardcore by not having mirrors and not having to look at yourself while you work out, however you want to phrase it, it just makes the space feel and look more like a gym. And in my opinion, that's encouraging to train in there. So that's my two cents on mirrors. Here we got two dumbbell weight racks, I guess, from Cap Fitness. Uh, as you can see, it stores my five 
to 100 pound set of hex dumbbells from Rep Fitness. Uh, these are really nice. I use these pretty much for every single workout uh, that requires dumbbells, obviously. It's nice to have these dumbbells because you could just throw them around and they'll last you forever. And you don't have to worry about it breaking. Whereas if you had adjustable dumbbells, you would not be able to drop them and you can change the weights as fast as you could with just regular hex dumbbells. I do have power blocks. They're not here right now, but I will include that in the price as well here. Moving on, I got a pile box from Amazon. This pile box is really nice. It's pretty heavy. It's around 60 pounds. Uh, I got this for my jump training because I want to be able to dunk one day. So I had to go work on that still. Uh, clearly I'm so far off from that, but it's nice to have as you can do uh, many things with this and use it as a box squat if you want to. Over here, I got some more posters, which I included in the price from before. And right here, there's a bunch of flags, including the one of Arnold, some Rogue banner, and another mirror that I got at the beginning of the pandemic, and some more flags. I'm Chinese American, so if you hate on me for being Chinese, that's your problem. Um, over here is probably the most expensive wall, if not second most expensive part of the gym, which is uh, I got a bunch of barbells, obviously. As you can see here, they got a Kabuki Cadillac bar. Uh, that's my most expensive barbell, actually. And right under it is an Echo barbell from Rogue. It's an Echo bar 2.0. And then that's a, oh, this third one right here is an Ohio Power bar from Rogue Fitness. This is the black Cerakote version or black eco. Um, as you can see, it's already kind of wearing off. This is a Titan Yukon bar. I got this when it was on sale, but I haven't really used it much. It is a thicker bar than I'm used to, and I will do a review on that eventually. And right here is- I also need to eventually do a review on one of those. I still have it boxed up. In the garage, as a lot of you pointed out on my last unboxing, it's still just kind of hanging out over there. Uh, we'll get to it though. It's not going anywhere. We'll get to it. This is a simple little curl bar I got at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I don't use it much actually. I should probably use it because my arms are small. <laughs> and then at the bottom, we got a safety squat bar from Time Fitness. And I haven't been using that much <laughs> as either. Um, over here, I got this little dumbbell rack thing I got at the beginning of the pandemic as well, uh, and some various attachments that I've had from a long time ago that I don't use. I got these fat grips right here, or fat grip knockoffs, and some random Sharpie stuff that does have nothing to do with the gym. Over here is probably the main attraction of the gym which is my power rack this is the rml 690 from uh from rogue fitness this thing is probably the most expensive thing in the gym it costs upwards to almost 2k and the barbell that's loaded right now is a lu xiaojun e1 power bar that i got it's really really nice and budget friendly The dip bar right here is from Titan. It's a Titan X3 dip bar. I uh, haven't really used it that much, but it's nice. I have these uh, Lockjaw Pro collars. I have two of these um, and these change weights that I got off of Amazon that I never use. Right here, I have a little basketball net that I got off Amazon. It's from Skills Pro, it's the extra wide version. As you can see, it fits perfectly over the double rail pull-up that comes with your power rack, which is really, really nice because you don't have to configure anything. And I'm just tall or short enough that it doesn't really get in the way of me <laughs> doing any movement. And you just can't do Definitely the first basketball goal we've seen in the home gym. I love it. Very cool touch. Pull-ups on these, but I have other pull-up bars inside. As you can see, it's a Titan multi-grip pull-up bar that I attached my Rogue rack. The safeties here are from Rep Fitness. I know Rep Fitness had their own safety 
strap issues as of lately but i got these before that happened and i have had no issues with failing on the squat or bench with these and they have not breaking broke on me so i don't think of any reason to replace them Over here, I have these roller J cuffs from Time Fitness. I got them because it's nice to roll around your bar to adjust it. If you tend to rack it in a weird way, that one bar will be slightly over than the other. It's just nice to get in the right position. I mainly use it for if I'm doing some floor presses or something, but I don't use it that much either. Right here on the rack is a PR4000 landmine from Rep Fitness for any landmine work. I don't use it that much either, but it's nice to have because if you want to change up your workout, you can. Do you guys actually use your landmines? <laughs> I think I said when I was doing my video about my gym, I've used my landmine like maybe twice in the entire time that I've had it, which has been since I got that rack. So while you're also thinking of what your favorite part about Simon's gym is, also let us know down below if you actually use your landmine, because I don't. Right here on the back is a bench prop from Rogue Fitness in collaboration with Brandon Campbell from uh, Brandon Campbell <laughs> from Basement Brandon, uh, a fellow home gym YouTuber. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, it's really nice. It just props up your bench and keeps it centered every time in the rack. Bit hefty on the price for this, but it's just really nice and convenient to have. And right here, I have these Rogue monoliths that I got for my Monster Light rack. Uh, again, really, really nice to have if you don't like unracking and re-racking the bar when you're benching by yourself. It's just nice to have and it's coming in and it's nice to be safe, you know? And rack here is a Rogue wrist roller that I got. As you can see, it's chipped already. It came like that and there's no knurling on this. I would actually suggest getting the um, Titan Fitness one, if you can, it's cheaper and has neural. The only reason why I got the Rogue one is because I've had bad luck with it fitting my rack, so I just didn't get it. Right here is a custom made rack attachment that I made by myself. It's not really attached, as you can see, it's mostly attached by these super uh, durable bungee cords and straps. But this really didn't cost me anything because it came from my old um body solid home gym piece i had since middle school and as for the weights i have on this power rack they're all rogue echo v2 bumper plates that i got it's just really nice and i have these awesome lockjaw uh collars that are super super tight and it doesn't allow the bar or weights to move anywhere i have almost i believe I think I have two sets of Rogue Echoes and a bunch of 45s, as you can see back there. I got these huge chains that I believe they're like 60 pounds each from uh, Titan Fitness. It's really nice. I really haven't used it that much. Got these chain weights from Fitness Gear that I got at the beginning of the pandemic because nowhere else was available for weights. Over here, I just got some trophies we got from competing in some bodybuilding shows but way back when in freshman year of college. Got some boxing gloves, some knee sleeves, some elbow sleeves, some other knee sleeves. Uh, and right here, just some miscellaneous straps and wraps and whatever, and some shoes from Notorious Lift. Another pair of Dello shoes from Notorious Lift, some Converse's, and some Romelio 3's. Over here is kind of the accessory wall or the attachment wall. I got this multiple pole attachment from Stiff Fast Lifting. And that's just an old cable curl bar, straight bar that I got from my old body solid machine. And then I got a kind of like an easy curl attachment, a flat tricep pushdown attachment and a V tricep pushdown attachment. And then I also got these angle grip things that I don't use, as well as another poster. I have a cooler here, I didn't buy that. It's, it just, we had it in our family, so I just left it there. I like to sit on this uh, sometimes if I'm taking a break between sets. 
Over here is the Rogue Monster Utility Bench with the Thompson Fat Pad. This is really, really nice. It's a really nice flat bench. I think it's the best one out there that you can get. Right there is a Rep Fitness AB3100 adjustable bench. It's their most budget friendly bench and it's just really nice because it works. You don't have to spend a crap amount of money to for like a nice adjustable bench because you guys already know what I'm gonna say. Rep Fitness, best bang for your buck in benches. If you're looking for one, go through the links down below. It does help out the channel. I have that same adjustable bench, if I can talk today. I have that same adjustable bench in our commercial gym right now because we're waiting on all of our other benches and honestly, fits right in. I love it. It's been great so far. This one's really nice too. Right here is a Bells of Steel squat belt squat machine that I got a while back. It's really, really nice. If you really want a belt squat machine, it just helps with like decompressing your spine and working on your legs and without having to load anything on your back. And right here, I just have mostly cast iron plates from Rogue Fitness. I got a bunch of them because I don't like moving my weights from my squat rack to over here where I'm deadlifting. This is a Rogue Fitness weight tree that I add a Titan Fitness rack mounted chalk bowl to. And right here is a deadlift platform that I made with these rubber tiles that I got from Rogue Fitness. And the frame is from Titan Fitness and the wooden frame, the wooden centerpiece is something I custom made uh, with some wood that I got from Home Depot. It's a Koski, as you can see, and it has some more Rogue Echo plates, plates as well as a Cleva Belt deadlift jack. As you can see, I have some more posters over here, as well as framed posters of Mike Tyson, Arnold, a poster of uh, <laughs> Rock Lee from anime Naruto and then a poster yeah. of Chris Bunsen, Ronnie Coleman, Branch Kang, Kobe Bryant and Bruce Lee. All legends in their own aspect in my opinion and it's just nice to have them to motivate you if you're not feeling motivated. I really like that. That's a really cool touch especially not just having bodybuilders or just powerlifters in there but having the mix of a few different sports that's that's really cool. Right here, we got a sissy squat machine from Rogue, not from Rogue, from Amazon. And it's just nice to have to burn out your quads if you're doing some bodybuilding stuff. As well as a Titan back extension machine that I got for warming up for squats and deadlifts. Or if you're doing, trying to train your posterior training. Body solid multi gym machine. I got a really great deal off Facebook market for $250, you heard that right. This thing brand new is around 5K. It's just <laughs> nice for all the body, body building movements. It's a leg press, there's a chest press, there's a pull down, there's a fly machine on the back. There's leg extension as well. It's just super nice and convenient to have. Got these Iron Infidel bands from Amazon right when the pandemic started so I could just do band workouts uh clearly that didn't last that long because i had to get all this other gym equipment to make my training more enjoyable at home lastly i got this storage kind of unit from home depot uh as you can see i have my belt on here my sbd belt these custom dumbbell handles that i was supposed to give away but the guy never responded to me so i'll probably give them away in another video these pull down attachments that I got from Walmart from Everyday Essentials, I believe. It's kind of like mag grips, which is really nice, but for like a fraction of the price. I got these Titan Fitness drop pads, silence drop pads that I like to use as a seat for my low rows and for potential deficit deadlifts. And a Titan landmine. Uh, attachment that's the viking press attachment it's really really nice i highly suggest that and then just a speaker amazon echo dot and some extra padding that i got here's some trap easy uh i like to call these wolverine claws it's nice for doing side laterals and basically shrugs and stuff 
Here I got some glute bands for warming up. I also got this humidifier, but I didn't buy this. It came, I had it laying around, so I just used it for my gym. It's nice to have for your basement if you tend to have a muggy basement in the summer and you don't want your equipment to, you know, rust and stuff. Lastly, guys, uh, the flooring that I'm standing on are horse stalls mats. I have around, I would say almost 16 of them. So if you guys know how much they cost, they cost around $40 each. So that's a lot of money for just flooring. I also have these fake grass hash slash turf kind of thing. And I got like three rolls of them because I didn't want to spend more money on horse stall mats and I'm not dropping any weights over there. So that's why I got those and it looks nice. So instead of doing that, that's just like a nice suggestion that you could do as well. If you don't want to spend a crap ton of money on horse stall mats, plus going there and hauling them here to your home gym because that's a lot of work too. And most people don't live near a tractor supply co. So yeah. Lastly, I do want to talk about how much I spent on painting uh, because I did paint the concrete walls and that took a while. That was like the most gruesome work because I don't know if you guys have painted on concrete walls before, it just takes so long. You have to like double or triple layer because there's little holes in them that if you don't get, it just look really, really ugly. So, and there's that. But yeah, guys, that's my home gym tour. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's kind of hard to film and show myself at the same time when I'm trying to show you the equipment because obviously I'm filming by myself and I'm showing you guys by myself. So I still hope that you guys enjoy the home gym tour. And if you like the video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. I make new videos every week, as I said at the beginning. And hopefully I was able to somewhat be accurate with the pricing because obviously over time you kind of forget the pricing and I would have to dig up all the receipts, which I'm doing now. But sometimes it's hard to factor in like taxes and shipping as well. So I just add in a little bit more of that into here. And I just didn't add anything that I had laying around before. I, only, I just only add up the stuff that I personally spent and bought when starting the gym instead of just adding in things that I didn't buy into the pricing. So, so this is how much I spent guys. I know it's a crazy amount of money, but obviously this is over the course of the whole year. So if you think about it, it's not that bad. And hopefully in the future I can get more stuff, but honestly, I don't think I will be able to because I pretty much ran out of space unless I turn the entire basement into a gym, which I can't because this is my parents' home and it's not my house. But in the future, when I do have my own home, I will be building more and dedicating more space to a home gym than I currently am now. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I'm checking out. Keep getting them gains, guys. Kage, Kage, no All right, first and foremost, everybody go over to Simon's YouTube channel and subscribe. Let's see how many subscribers he's at right now. He did a really good job. On the video, he has an awesome gym. He's at 639. Yeah, it does look like he's posting about around once per week. So make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna do that right now. So now he's at 640. So let's get him to a thousand. He should be at least at a thousand. But anyways, let's talk about Simon's home gym. Thank you, by the way, for letting us check it out. I was almost gonna tell you my favorite part, but first a reminder, comment your favorite part down below so we can see if we're on the same wavelengths. All right, my favorite part is the overall gym decor, specifically those neon tubes, once a dominate, I'm not sure what the other one said. I thought that was really cool. There was some real tasteful lighting selections in there to add a little bit of some accent color. And then the framed posters of the bodybuilders, Kobe Bryant, Bruce Lee, those were really cool. I really enjoyed that. So comment down below what your favorite part of his gym was. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. This gym and the gym we just looked at, the silent walkthrough of the basement gym has started to make me wish I had some more space for my own home gym. I'm in a single car garage unit, as you guys know. So it's about 10 feet by 18 and a half. And that thing is pretty well packed. And there's a lot of other stuff I'd like to have. So I might need to figure something out, but... 
until then, we'll keep rolling with what we're doing. If you have a home gym that you want me to feature on the channel, record a video horizontally, upload it to YouTube. You can put it on there as unlisted if you want, or just listed. Either way, send me the link on Instagram, garage underscore gym underscore gains, or email garage gym gains with a G. With a Z. I mean, it has a G as well, but with a Z. It must be too early to record. I don't know. I should have slept in today. Either way, we'll catch you next time.